Hello everyone. In this video, I will be discussing on how to study GenPath for second year. I am making this video after a lot of requests from juniors on how to read Robinson Quatrains and how to approach MCQs during the exams. So I am giving you a disclaimer, whatever I am telling in this video is advice from my seniors, from the doctors and from my friends. Uh, we have all tried these methods and it has worked out sometimes and for some people it has not. So it is up to you to choose what works best for you and go ahead with it. So this is just a suggestion you are more than welcome to follow your own methods. I will share you whatever I have learned on how to approach GenPath in this video. So first, uh, we will be going through the general introduction about what GenPath is and what is the culmination that forms GenPath. Then we will be looking at how to read Robinson Quatrains. I will be showing you one of the easiest ways to read Robinson Quatrains. And third, how to prepare for the exam. Let us say your evals, your compre, your pre-finals, the term exams. And finally, how to study for your moving lab examinations. So let us get started. First, please keep in mind that the subjects you learnt in first year, the four main subjects which is physiology, anatomy, biochemistry and histology form the core of your general pathology. What do I mean by that? Physiology is something that stu that you study which describes the normal functioning of the human's, human body. right? So physiology tells what is normal. Even anatomy tells you what is normally located where. Even biochemistry tells you what, is the, what are the normal biochemical processes that takes place inside a body. And histology gives you the microscopic view of the body tissues. So all of these together combined forms your general pathology. But there is a twist. It is just the abnormal process of all these things. So basically in GenPath you will be seeing what went wrong with the physiology that led to the uh, uh, clinical manifestation in the patient. What went wrong in the anatomy? What is the gross appearance of the organ? What went wrong in the biochemistry? What went wrong in this pathway? What defect? What enzyme is defective? And same for the histology. How does the tissue look like when it is affected by some disease or some pathology? So that is what you will be looking at GenPath. So to be really good at GenPath, Whenever you read a topic in GenPath, make sure you go back and quickly revise the Physio, Anat, Biochem and Histo topics behind it. Alright? So first, the holy grail of GenPath is the Robinson Contrads book, the 10th edition one, Pathologic Basis of Disease. So I suggest everyone to read this as much as you can because it is of full of really good and high yield information. So I am going to tell you why you should read this book how and what in the book you should read importantly and when you should read the book. Okay, So about the why, see I understand PPTs are really concise and they are made by doctors but PPT is just for the sake of the lecture. So the doctors do not have all the information in a single PPT most of the times. So the explanation to some concepts that you are doubtful about may not be in the PPT or some high yield facts or some really important images may not be in the PPT and that may not show up in the exam or that might not be useful for your knowledge. Okay, so that, that's why it's always important to read the Robinson Cotter's textbooks. I know it's a pretty obvious uh, explanation why you should read the book, but it is what it is. So let's discuss about how, what and when. So before going to when, I'll talk about how and what. So how do you study Robinson Quatrains? Now going to study Rod's Robinson Quatrains line by line is going to be a very tedious task. Okay, and you will feel like giving up after reading one or two pages because I guess at least each chapter has more than 10 or 15 pages minimum and some chapters have 40 to 50 pages too. So what I did was I first went through the summary. So these blue boxes here are the summary boxes, the key concept con uh, boxes. They are after every single main topic inside a chapter. So before going through the topic, I go through this blue box. Okay. And I understand what this chapter is about. So that gives me an idea on how to approach the chapter. Now, after I'm done with the summary, I go to the text. And in the text, instead of starting line by line, what I do is look at these bold sentences, the bold sentences. Every paragraph in Robbins almost has these bold sentences that define what that paragraph is almost about. Okay, they do not go to the detail and it's not like, like the summary, but it's about that paragraph in a crisp way. So after finishing summary, go to the text and understand what, what is the subtopic you're going to study through these bold texts. 
and then have a superficial read through through the text and whatever you find important note it down okay so step 1 it's the summary step 2 go through the text first the bold and the italics and whatever you feel is important and note them down so step 3 step 3 while you're going through the text you will run across some images right so let's say this let's say these images make sure to understand these images by heart okay understand it properly because let me tell you an example this is a picture from the uh, cardiovascular system pathology so we had cvs for our uh, pre final term in first sem if i'm not wrong no one guessed that we would be uh, given a lot of image based questions for the pre final exams because till mid terms we had very uh, little image based questions for pathology lecture exam but in pre final we had a lot of image based questions based on the valves the chordate tendine and all these pictures that you can see here not not only this the other pictures in the chapter 2 so make sure you understand these images relate them to the topic you just learnt and go through these things because these things might sometimes have extra points or high yield facts that you should compulsorily know and that might reflect as a direct question in your examination okay so this is the third step make sure you see all the macroscopic and the microscopic images and read what's underneath those images to relate it to the topic step 4 read about the morphology in these green boxes see these green boxes all the times every paper will 100% have one or two questions okay i'm just saying i'm not over exaggerating it i'm just saying minimum one or two questions in every single exam from these green morphology boxes okay so make sure you go through them and understand what's important in these morphology boxes so step 4 done step 5 this is the most important step go and memorize these tables okay i don't know how you are going to do that you can create mnemonics you can create mind maps whatever you can but memorize these tables because these tables will give rise to a lot of answers in your examinations let's say direct questions indirect questions clinical based questions everything can be asked in tables uh, from the tables in uh, robins and cotton so make sure in every single chapter you know the tables in you have the tables in your finger tips all right so fifth step tables okay so let me just summarize the steps to read robins okay first go through the summary the blue box then go through the text especially the bold and the important lines third go through the images read what's underneath the images and related to the topic you just learned fourth go through the morphology and finally go through the tables and memorize those tables without fail okay so while you do all that you must take notes or it's up to you see there are people my there are some of my friends who do not take any notes at all but they still score very high if you are that kind of a person you do not have to take notes you will still uh, you will still have good results in your exam but if you are someone who uh, wants to create record of notes so that you can revise later or you can refer to it in third year or during your comp pre examination or if if it's just that you cannot survive without notes then i would suggest you to make notes but keep in mind second year is a very high yield and vast uh, vast year it has a lot of topics but at the same time a lot of topics are very high yield and very crucial to remember so i would suggest you to make the notes to the point keep it very simple no need a lot of decorations if you are able to manage your time then no problem keep it simple keep it high yield only and try to add flow charts do not add points that you already know of let's say definition of apoptosis or definition of cell death necrosis no need to write that down if you know what that actually means write down the types of necrosis if you don't know what the types of necrosis so that you can refer to it later so avoid all the unnecessary things and the things that you already know and just add what you really want to remember or what you really want to revise at the last moment so keep it to the point so let me show you some examples of my notes uh from one of the basics chapters at the start so if you see i have made a flow chart here for necroptosis pyroptosis and ferroptosis using very simple terms okay i have not ex- over exaggerated i have not written down big big paragraphs i have used short forms i have used arrows and all these things to uh indicate that uh, the process is happening so you can also do something like that to keep it simple and save your time and even in this diagram you can see i have made a mito So, so since I was bored, I just simply made an image of mitochondria so that it looks good. Okay, so you can do that sometimes to induce your interest too. 
so you can make flow charts you can make multiple arrows which induces which pathway which inhibits which pathway and finally what is the result what gets released so it's totally up to you but keep it high yield and keep it simple because you don't have a lot of time in second year okay but i would suggest you to make really good notes so that you can refer to it just before exam so it will be very easy for you and you can also make down these note down these important points in telegram let's say you uh, pulmonary okay pulmo uh, you're doing gen path you can note important points like these like what are the characteristic structure present in the slide of an asthmatic patient or a characteristic uh, type of fibrosis that is present in pulmonary fibrosis so you can make make note down points like this share it to your friends so that it can be used as a last time high last minute high yield revision okay you can make this too digital notes so what to do just before the exam so the night before the exam go through the book okay and go through your notes that you've made and by book i mean the points that you've noted as to be important in the book okay not everything line by line the ones that you've noted to be important fine go through that now for the first reading i forgot to mention do it before the topic or do it during the lecture of that topic okay before is always advisable but to be very realistic it's not possible all the times but try your best to read the topics in advance so that when you go to class it's already like a first or second revision for you but if you cannot do that if you're focusing on other subjects that you're weak in then i would suggest at least mark and annotate in the book as the lecture goes on so that the next time you make notes or you revise it will be the second or third revision for you okay and now what to do one hour before the examination just go through the high yield things which is the tables the images the morphology and some important facts that you've noted in your notes okay very very important guys and especially i'm stressing on tables on neoplasia and all these other chapters that you will see in second sem and in first sem too make sure you do all the tables because a lot of questions can be lifted from the tables okay what to do during exam so if you've done whatever i've i've told till now study the book the tables the morphology the summary and made notes but during exam still questions can be sometimes difficult okay so do the easy questions first because you might think a lot for one single question and waste all the time and at the end you might not be able to attend the questions that you already knew so do the easy question first and skip the questions that you don't know of okay if you feel like there is a red box in between all those green boxes it's okay Go, uh, get over it but skip the questions that you feel is hard and long do the easy questions first and keep these kind of questions for the last option a option b op- both option a and option b and none none of the choices these kind of questions are always tricky keep it for the last do not waste a lot of time on that because other questions might be more easier third while handling these kind of questions read the options carefully because there will be a single twist let's say in the chromosome number or let's say in the grammar of the sentence sometimes that will change the entire sentence so f- the only uh, only advice or guideline to attend these kind of questions is to read the options very very carefully and related to what you read in the book okay now to avoid losing marks in these kind of questions the next time you give the exam after the exam as soon as you finish the exam go and mark down the topics or the paragraphs in the book which had those a and b sentences okay and see if they match if they don't match it's okay fine the next time they're going to ask you some questions related to it you'll be able to answer because you know what that sentence is you know which sentence is true which sentence is false so read read whatever is above it below it so that you can cover like uh, 90 to 99% of the topic and whatever the questions they can ask from it okay so this is the steps to follow during an exam and after an exam finally this is the most uh, requested one how to go with your moving exams in the lab the first important point in moving exam for lab is please listen to your pre lab lectures they are really really important and they are very high yield okay listen to your pre lab lectures and make down notes especially the feature of a slide that is very distinct to that particular slide let's say you're uh, learning about leo myoma okay and what you observe there is spindle shaped smooth muscles this is just an example schwannoma you see antony a and antony b areas where okay bodies so list down that specific classical feature of that slide that will help you identify that slide in your moving exam or in your lab time okay make note of that 
now with that note go to the lab and look at the slides by yourself okay and see if what you took note matches with what you see in the slide if not take another slide from another group okay or call the uh, or ask your preceptor to help you with understanding what the slide is so the main thing is listen to the pre lab lectures because that is almost 50 to 60% of your job okay that will finish 50 to 60% of your job in attending your moving exams so now i would suggest do not see references like this okay we have an entire reference like this i'll link it in the youtube description but i would suggest for you to make your own so that practice is there okay but you can still refer to the seniors or your group mates or your classmates annotations so that you know what's correct so you can compare you can see multiple images do that but i would suggest you also to take pictures and annotate them as you uh, see them in the uh, lab class and finally once you go back home or once you have a break read about the slide in robins and cotrins let's say leo mayoma read about leo mayoma because sometimes in the moving exam the uh, sub question will be regarding the gene that caused a specific tumor to mutate or a specific disease to happen or it could be a clinical manifestation or it could be some uh, increase in number of specific uh, blood cell okay it could be anything so read about the slide after you finish the class or after you after you get a break so that you you can answer these sub questions in each moving exam